Hello everybody, DMart95, uh, about ready to do a big bore how-to video. In this video, we'll demonstrate how to install a video or uh, how to install a big bore kit. What we'll be installing is a Tata 61 millimeter piston big bore kit. This is the biggest that you can install without actually having to uh, bore out the engine case. They still call it a big bore kit, even though you don't actually have to bore out your engine. But it takes your displacement up quite a bit. On top of that, we'll be installing an NCY 61mm uh, racing head. This is a very nice head. It's got springs rated up to 12,000 RPMs. Ports are slightly enlarged on both sides, exhaust and intake. We will also be, in a part three of this video, be upgrading this engine to accommodate a 12-pole stator. A stator is what generates your electricity for your moped, and this one comes with an eight-pole stator. It's going on a BMS Heritage 150cc, which requires a 12-pole stator, and this one has eight poles, so I have to swap it out. But we're going to do the big bore kit. This is part one in this video is what we'll be doing is removing the top path. Part two, I'll be putting the big bore kit on there. So here we go on how to remove the cylinder and all the goodies that go with. Okay, step one, remove your intake manifold. To remove the intake manifold, use a 10 millimeter socket. Next step, you're gonna remove the engine shroud, which is the plastic, which cools, that's how your engine keeps cool. The fan blows into here and cools it off. You're gonna need an eight millimeter socket, and a number two Phillips head screwdriver. There's a couple screws and sockets. Once you remove the sockets, or the bolts, one, two, and one on this side for a total of three. Remove your screws. You're gonna have one right here, obviously. There, there. This will have to come off anyways for the stator installation. And then there's going to be two more screws on the other side. Don't worry, they're all the same length. Actually, there's only one screw on this side. And it's got little tabs. Don't just force it apart. Push the tabs down. And voila! Set it off to the side. Okay, now we're ready to move on to cylinder remove, removal. This is your valve cover, cylinder head, cylinder. First step, let's go ahead and remove, this is called your uh, chain tensioner. It provides tension on your chain, so as it stretches out over time, this will keep tension and make sure you don't wind up a slack or slop on your chain. Removal, eight millimeter.
set it off to the side. Next step, remove your valve cover. And be careful, this rubber right here is your air seal. Be careful not to damage it. Set it over with the case. Let's remove our valve cover. Valve cover. Try to keep all your bolts together. I put them right back in their holes. Next, we're gonna remove the roller rock or the rocker arms. One, two, three, four. They're 12 millimeter. Them are your stud nuts. Go ahead and remove them and the cradle will come off. Once you remove the four nuts, just rock them back and forth, slides right off. These are called your rocker arms, these things right here. This is your cradle, your camshaft cradle. Well, actually, this is the cradle. This is a rocker arm assembly. Then you need to remove two bolts over here. One, two. Eight millimeter. Okay, before you go any further, we're going to take the camshaft off there. Let it dip down, slide it off, and then set your camshaft off to the side. This is, we'll be replacing this. Then your cylinder head will slide right off. Careful not to lose these. These are these are called your dowel pins, but they're actually case alignment pins. They're for making sure that when you put it together, uh, the holes are perfectly aligned. Try not to lose those. And simply set it off to the side. We'll be replacing this with this. This is your head gasket. Again, two more uh, dowel pins. Now we're going to remove our cylinder. It's completely uh, unbolted at this point. You don't have to do anything else. A lot of times it's kind of hard to get off and you might need a rubber mallet to tap it. Yeah, so I'm going to need a rubber mallet. I'll be right back. So once you uh, tap that loose, pull it on out. And there's the cylinder. The one, this has got a 57.4 millimeter piston. Now it's going to have a, a bigger 61 millimeter. No, you know what they say. No replacement for displacement. Now we have to remove the piston. In order to do that, grab you some needle nose pliers. And there's going to be what they call circlips. Or actually, they're just piston clips. And you're going to have to remove them. It's very simple. But I can't get the camera in to show you a good shot. So, this, this right here is what the little clip looks like. Looks like the shape of the letter G. All you do is just stick it in there, rotate it till you see the opening in, in the piston. There'll be a little notch on the side. It'll be a circle with a notch. Just when you get to that notch, just kind of lean this out and it comes right out. You'll see how to do it. It's very simple. Alright, once you move the little clips... From the side, you have to push out your piston wrist pin.
and this is the wrist pin and then the piston comes right on off normally you might have a little bit more harder time with your parts taken being taken apart but this is a brand new engine so that's why everything's coming apart so easy i get these questions guys saying man how do you take that apart so easy it's never like that for me well it's because most of the time i'm working with brand new parts so moving on okay now this is our final step this gasket material that has been left by the original piston kit the original cylinder has to be completely removed it has got to be down to bare metal i don't know if you can see in this part of the video but like right here where it's bare metal it all has to be like that you have to completely remove every bit of gasket material that was on there from or otherwise you, you will have engine leaks i like to use this right here permatex gasket remover now it's not going to remove your gasket but it will make it a lot more soft, make it to where it's less adhesive, and it'll scrape right off with a razor. Put this on, let it sit on there for about 15 minutes, and then use a razor blade or gasket scraper, whatever you're going to use to remove the rest of it. So, I'm going to go ahead and apply this and scrape that off, and be right back after that. Figured I'd do a real quick shot showing you guys what it looks like. It's just like foamy stuff that comes out of there so let that uh soak in for like 15 minutes and scrape it off okay and that's what it should look like once it's completely done you can see absolutely no gasket material left on there if there were gasket material like i said you would definitely have a leak uh the, when you're done hit it with a little bit of brake clean uh it evaporates real quick, but it will also allow you to clean your surfaces real good. Make sure there's nothing left from the uh, chemical in the Permatex gasket remover or anything. You don't want to apply new gaskets and not have them working right because there's a residual remover on there. So, uh, go ahead and hit it with a little bit of brake clean. Just a touch like that. And then that's it. All right, so this is the end of part one. If you'd like to talk about anything you've seen in this video, go to dansgaragetalk.com. Again, that's www.dansgaragetalk.com. If you want to buy any of the parts you see, visit my web store, shop.martinmopeds.com. Again, shop.martinmopeds.com. All right, thanks for watching. I hope you follow along in part two to watch the installation.